morning. I'm Hong Tui. On behalf of the Authors Project, I would like to thank the TED Work organizers for the opportunity to present our prototyping work to support author-driven computable phenotype data and ontology production. TED Work community knows that phenotype information in current publications is in, in general not, not easily findable, accessible, interoperable, or reusable. Current practice of making use of published phenotype information includes professional curation, but this practice is known to be expensive and is burdened with intercurator variation. That is, the same piece of information curated by different curators could produce different results. Such intercurator variation is mainly caused by the ambiguity in the published phenotype descriptions, which remains an issue for the automated information extraction approach. The third approach, author curation, where authors are invited to curate their own published work, has low response rate, and the authors often face issues such as the terms they need are not in the ontology, and adding a new term to the ontology can take a long time. What we proposed in the authors in the um, driver's seat project is to enable authors to produce fair data at the time of, of the publication, allowing them to be produce human readable descriptions and RDF data at the same time. We would allow authors to add terms to ontologies when they need them and allow best term and practices to emerge from community practices. In this talk, I will present the main outcome of the author's project. I would briefly report the findings from a 2019 survey on biologist attitude towards ontologies, curation, and potential solutions. I will illustrate how our software prototype support authors to create semantic representations for numerical characters and for colors. I will highlight semantic checking features in our software prototypes, character recorder, and conflict resolver. The attitude survey received 91 effective responses. The survey can still be accessed at the link provided here. The 28 questions included in the survey asked about respondents' current experience and overall attitude with control vocabularies or ontologies, their awareness of the issues around ambiguous information and post-publication curation. We also asked about their preferred solutions, the effort they are willing to commit, and their desired rewards for adopting a new authoring workflow. We found that 73% of the respondents is frustrated with ambiguity in published phenotypic descriptions. We found that although many control vocabularies are available and are known to the respondents, the use of the control vocabularies is not common in publications or in daily work. We saw a strong agreement that author curation, as opposed to professional curation, would reflect the original meaning of the phenotype information better. What is really encouraging is that 85% of the respondents would try a new authoring workflow if the resultant data is more consistent and less ambiguous. In addition, if a new authoring workflow only requires 5% more effort to use, then 93% of the respondents would try it and possibly adopt it, and higher effort any higher effort requirement would result in a steep decline in the likely adoption rate. At the same time, 22% of the participants admitted that they would not use a control vocabulary if not mandatory. Other interesting findings can be found in our paper to appear in Oxford's database journal. Keep the findings from the survey in mind, we designed our new authoring workflow prototype to be intuitive and friendly to use. The software integrates ways to support authors to semantically define their characters or select characters that are well defined by others. Here I will present two examples. Since we used the plant genus Carex as our case study, the examples you will see are related to Carex but generally applicable to other taxa. The first example is a semantic representation of numerical characters. Those are measurements such as length, width, and distance. In publications, we could find a statement that says peridinium beak 1.6 millimeters, but without description on how the length was measured, this statement carries no useful information for computation because there are several different ways the length could have been measured. Character recorder enables the user to create a new numerical character by defining how the measurement is taken. 
they would specify the landmarks where the measurement starts and ends, structures that should be included or excluded, and where a measurement is taken. The software would check those landmark terms, and if they're not in the backend ontology, it would ask the user to provide more information, for example, provide a definition for a term. If a term is already in the ontology, a green check mark would indicate that. Characters created by the users are saved in the ontology and immediately available for others to use and, and view. Character Recorder also holds illustrations of the numerical characters frequently used by Carex experts. Our usability experiment showed that the participants find the illustrations very useful. The second example of semantic representation is pertinent to colors. Professor Starr of University of Ottawa and a student provides us a valuable dataset of color measurements for 300 character species. Colors of leaf, peridinium, etc. of real specimen were captured using image J. Corresponding color phrases were collected from Flora North America. It is well known that the color labels are not good semantic representation for colors. Here we see that same color being labeled differently as light green and bright green. The same label, pale green, is used for dramatically different colors. Using this dataset, we wanted to derive a color palette using a data mining approach. We used various clustering and classification methods on the color RGB values and found RGB color space is not a very suitable representation for colors. Machine-produced groupings do not correspond to human perception very well. Showing in the left graph, in the red-green space, different colors are mixed together. When we map the colors from the RGB color space to the LAB color space, the colors were much better separated, as you can see in the right graph. But neither color space were good for separating colors when human color labels are used. Different color labels are mixed in the color spaces. We used a support vector machine to group different colors based on their A and B values. Then used lightness access to divide colors into light, medium, and dark groups to create color palettes like what is shown in the slide. These color palettes are now used in the character recorder. A segment of the character matrix in character recorder is shown at the bottom of this slide. I included a set of slides that show the semantic feature of character recorder, but I don't have time to go through them in detail. We would appreciate it if the audience would review them in the PPT file and play with character recorder live at the link provided here. This screenshot shows the setup matrix page. User can create a new character. They need to define the character. After the user select or created characters needed for their matrix, they will input values. The matrix is transformed into RDF trick files nightly and the user can also generate a narrative description based on the matrix. The matrix, the description, and the trick files are all exportable. A input template is provided for users to create or reuse values. Input template shows the user terms that are in the ontology for them to select. Input template checks the ontology and suggests better terms for the user. In case terms in an uh, existing matrix becomes deprecated in the ontology, the user will be signified and they can take actions to update their matrix or dispute the deprecation. Terms, including characters added by the users in character recorder can create issues. For example, one term may be added to different superclasses. Terms are added with poor definitions. Multiple synonyms are added as independent classes. Such conflicts are collected from character recorder regularly and presented in the mobile app for domain experts to resolve. As research prototypes, the, all these softwares are experimental instruments we use to investigate how to best support authors to produce fair data. Components of character recorder and conflict resolver have gone through several usability studies, which answered a set of questions. We now know that undergraduate students can define numerical char characters in less than five minutes. 
The character sharing and reuse features in character recorder reduce character variation by 48%. We used a combination of sample forms and wizards to enable users to add terms to ontology. We are currently recruiting taxonomists to participate in a three-day experiment with character recorder and conflict resolver. A honorarium of $200 per day is offered for participants. Um, if you're interested in participating in the experiment, please contact me directly. Thank you so much. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have.